Hola y bienvenidos otra vez a ¿Qué pasa Poke? Como le prometí, hoy tenemos mucha información para ustedes, pero siempre en nuestro condado nosotros estamos buscando lo que es el progreso. Y hoy con nosotros tenemos a Christine Díaz y a Zach. Me encanta ese nombre. Y van a hablar del de programa que tienen ellos ahora con los autopistas y lo que viene en el futuro. So, welcome aboard to ¿Qué pasa Poke? Hola, Christine. ¿Cómo estás? So, what are you bringing us? What exciting news are you bringing us about our roads? What are we doing? Yeah, so we have a, a new program going on right now. It started last year um, based on a law that the legislature passed in 2019 called the MCORS program. It's the Multi-Use Corridors of Regional Economic Significance, which is why we gave it an acronym. Wow. Um, well, and it's a, it's a, the legislature created its three separate corridors. Two of them are in North Florida, and one of them is down here in the southwestern and central Florida, uh, actually called the Southwest to Central Florida Connector. And it's to look at a, a new road uh, between Collier and Polk counties that will sort of help to serve revitalize uh, rural communities, increase transportation, and, and generally just make transportation in this area better, faster, uh, and, and pre provide more options for, for people in the area. Okay, so when you say more options, um, they can avoid the 27, Florida Turnpike. 17, I-75. Okay. Uh, all the other roads that are existing, which are, which are fine, and we've certainly made improvements to all of them. Uh, but this will make, this will help to give another option, and also could, could do things like bring broadband, uh, sewer, water, all those mm -hmm. things that especially some of our rural communities in mm -hmm. the Heartland counties don't currently have. And so uh, certainly there's a lot of potential benefits to this program. And it's something that, you know, not only the department, but I think people in general are pretty excited about. La tecnología, trayendo tecnología a estas áreas que no tienen, mm -hmm. es bien importante. So, entonces, en, en estas áreas en particular que son rural, como dijo él, esto, como dice Heartland, esto, so, entonces, eso es parte, eh, eh, le va a ayudar a estas personas que viven en esas áreas que son remotas, así, uh -huh. esto, llegar a lo que es el 21st century. Yeah, para llegar, to the future, the, yeah. the transportation, este es el futuro de transportación. Wonderful. Para so, so, eso indica, entonces, indica eso que si se hacen estas carreteras, que me imagino que van a tener peaje o algo. Sí. Esto va a traer, quién sabe, hasta industria. Y, sí. y, y más trabajos, de, y compañías, y, 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 y mucha economía okay. a Florida. So then, like I was mentioning, um, and asking Christine, so yeah. will these road, this particular road or this particular project bring um, commerce, uh, structural buildings such as homes, more more life into those areas, or more economic life, you know, injection into those areas? Sure, certainly one of the goals of the of the MCORS project is not only for transportation aspects uh, between Collier and Polk, but certainly to, to help revitalize uh, living conditions as well as the economy in some of our rural communities. Uh, like I said, bringing things potentially like sewer, broadband, uh, water that doesn't exist there outside of wells. Um, and then, you know, could potentially serve to, to drive the, uh, the economies, uh, increasing jobs and opportunities in some of those communities, which uh, certainly is a goal of the department and as well as those, as those communities themselves. So, entonces, esto, las carreteras, va, la carretera va a ser de peaje, va a tener toll. This, this road is projected to be a toll road. Uh, okay. You know, FDOT will construct it and ultimately it'll be run by Florida's Turnpike, which is a sort of a division of FDOT. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that'll be one of the ways to help certainly finance and fund the road yeah. itself. Well, that'll keep the roads looking um, very nice because when I take, the, when I cut into the Polk Parkway, I, I compare that parkway to my regular roads yeah. and it, it, it is so well yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. maintained. Yeah, the, the tolls on those roads, uh, it, whether it's the Polk Parkway, the Florida Turnpike, or Alligator Alley, those funds stay with those that facility. So they help uh, in terms of construction, but certainly in terms of maintenance and repairs and everything mm -hmm. that needs to go to make sure that they stay, you know, first class roads. Well, that's going to mean that's going to mean a lot of jobs for that particular area. That's especially you know de depending on where the counties that it's going to go through like you just mentioned before, that's going to bring that injection of, of employment, of jobs, because we're talking about welders, uh, concrete. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh my goodness, there's going to be work for yeah. people there in those areas. Yeah, certainly if the, if the project goes forward, you know, and that's what the task force is looking at now and ultimately what the PD&E study will do, and it, assuming that they go forward with a, a build option to build a roadway, uh, 
certainly there would be uh, a considerable amount of work going into the design and ultimately the construction and in whatever course it goes. And we don't have an exact path right now. It's something that certainly the task force and then mm -hmm. the study will, will work on. We certainly kind of only have at this point beginning and endpoints being Collier and Polk. Mm -hmm. um, and then looking at we're looking at all of the counties in between. So it's mm -hmm. nine counties total. Um, Lee, Collier, Hendry, Glades, Charlotte, DeSoto, Hendry, Highlands, and Polk. I think I got wow. it. And yeah. Hardy, I think yeah. I may have so, missed. So, yeah. so all those so counties are, are being looked at and evaluated, and it may touch some or all of them mm -hmm. uh, as, it, as it works its way through. So, entonces, para eh, la comunidad latina que vive en, es, en esos condados mm -hmm. y en los municipios que les, les sigue por esas áreas, mm -hmm. ¿qué es lo que ellos eh, pueden esperar de, de este tipo de, de autopista? Okay. ¿Qué deben de saber? Mm -hmm. ¿Qué pueden preguntar ellos? Por? Mm -hmm. Pues ahora lo que están haciendo, están tratando de buscar la información y quieren la comunidad que, que diga la, las voces de ellos. Necesitamos que ellos hablen y nos digan mm -hmm. qué problemas tienen con transportación, qué están buscando, qué áreas podemos ayudarnos. Y por eso estamos aquí y, y el programa es para traer la información y llevarlo al Department of Transportation. ¿Y cómo puede la comunidad latina comunicarse con ustedes y darle el input, darle ese, sabes, ese énfasis a ustedes para que sepan? Well, she's asking about the transportation and how do we get that information out to the people, the Hispanic people. Yeah, certainly uh, it's an important part of our community. We have some parts of the district that are highly Hispanic. Uh, when you look at places like Immokalee and Arcadia, that, that, you know, a majority of people there speak Spanish as, okay. as a first language or only language. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's an important thing. So we've uh, we translated all of our documents into Spanish. Todo uh, right. Right. Todo right. Right. We also yeah. have um, some things in Creole because we do have a Creole speaking mm -hmm. population. We have staff at, at all of our meetings that can speak Spanish and staff available to speak Creole for, for those who may do it. And so uh, getting comments from, from everyone uh, is, is critical to the process. Uh, sí. Making sure that we hear from English speaking people, Spanish speaking people, Creole speaking people, or any other language. Um, we're okay. certainly willing to take comments, especially if people write them. It uh, makes it easy for us to translate them and, and get those comments and get their thoughts and feelings and questions, concerns, whatever mm -hmm. they may be incorporated into the project. I know that off camera we were, we were chatting about those people who, who live in Fort Myers and want to go across you know, they, they go up or they go down and then they come back up mm -hmm. and then they go up. So this is going to alleviate areas for people to connect with. I mean, I, you're telling me something that it's going to be great for me to just come straight down without any issues. Yeah, I anything that we can do to provide alternate corridors, whether that's with our existing roads like we were talking about with State Road 80 running between Fort Myers and Palm Beach so people don't have to go down to Alligator mm -hmm. Alley and, and take I-75 every time even though it's out of their way. So whether it's uh, improving our existing corridors, widening them, uh, making them safer and more attractive options, or potentially building new ones uh, like this one. It, it provides relief to those existing ones, uh, to I-75, to I-4, to US-27, which in, which in areas certainly gets congested. Uh, and anything that you can do to provide people more options not only benefits that specific corridor, but all of our existing ones as well. Todas opciones, tener opciones para la gente. Y Grisín, ¿qué es lo que ustedes desean esto? ¿Pueden el público latino asistir las reuniones de este proyecto? ¿Cómo ellos se pueden comunicar en saber cuándo van a empezar estas reuniones? Mm -hmm. Entonces, ¿cómo pueden eh, el público que nos están viendo hoy esto Exactamente. saber cómo ellos tenemos pueden participar? Tenemos un website, tenemos un website y en, en el website tienen toda la información que cada vez que hay una reunión lo ponemos en el periódico, lo anunciamos, vamos a estar trabajando con la comunidad para poner la información afuera para que ellos mm -hmm. puedan comunicar y venir. Es bien importante que vengan y las voces de ellos estén con nosotros para tener todos los comentarios. Así so, que... Todo lo que ven aquí al frente, ustedes Todo van, lo tenemos en español, lo, ven lo en tenemos español, en creole. Sí. Lo ven en el website de ellos, asistan esto, eh, las reuniones para que le den el input a ustedes. Y siempre tenemos gente que habla en español. Eso es bien importante para poder comunicar y, y darle toda la información. So, entiendo que esto va a coger como un proceso de 10 años. I understand this is more like a 10-year project or something. Yeah, the legislation, you know, the project began last year with sort of the task force press stage, which is where we are now. Um, ultimately, the, the legislation says that we should begin construction, assuming that a build option is selected by 2022, and that if practical, construction should be uh, completed by 2030. Okay. 
So that is, that's, that's going to be great, porque uh -huh. eso va a traer empleo, Mucho eso empleo. va a traer, eh, va a producir una área uh -huh. que ha estado bien tranquila, que no, no se sabe mucho de opciones, ella. Opciones, muchas, muchas opciones, opciones de transportación. Sí. Oh, I can see a whole stack of guaguas. No, <risa> anyway, <risa> pero muchísimas gracias. ¿Cuál es el website otra vez? Well, they want to know exactly the website sure. and all the information. Yeah, the, to so contact. our website for the project is www.floridamcores.com. Okay. Uh, you can go on there, you can read all the information, you, there's an interactive map that people can kind of play with and okay. look at what yes. kind of things they may be interested in. Awesome. Um, and they can also leave comments on there. Uh, mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to send us an email, uh, if they have questions or comments, concerns, they can do that. Uh, the, the email is fdot.listens nice. at dot.state.fl.us. Awesome. Uh, yes. And certainly, we, we, we all want as many comments and questions as we can get because ultimately Especially we, from we those particular areas, too. Right. Exactly. If you, if really you live in the corridor, uh, which is those nine counties that I mentioned before, we certainly want to hear from you. If you live outside, too, we're certainly willing to hear people's questions and comments and concerns. But certainly right. for those folks who live or work in those nine counties, yeah. um, our process, in our process of road building and planning and design, public comment, public input, and hearing from the folks who live and work in those communities is essential. Awesome. It's and, and it's something that we have to have and something that we desperately want because it's much easier for us to make changes and corrections, accommodations when we're designing something than after we build it. That's and wonderful. so we certainly want to get all those, all that input up front from as many people as possible. Um, thank you so much for stopping by and telling about the progress that's happening in our state. Thank well, you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Por gracias aquí. por venir acá. Gracias. Así que esto, progreso, eso es lo, lo importante de cualquier estado especialmente con la población latina que está entrando y de otros países también y en las áreas que pues no tienen ese, ese bullicio o progreso o accesibilidad para ciertas cosas comunes como hospitales y cosas así, este tipo de proyecto es lo que echa a un estado para adelante y claro pues mucha gente dice bueno well, me voy a mudar para la Florida porque hay progreso ahí. Así que esto no se me vayan, busquen su cafecito <risa> que regresamos con mucha información para ustedes.